إِنَّهُ مَنْ يَتَّقِي وَيَصْبِرْ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُضِيعُ أَجْرَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And if a person lives with taqwa, as in makes decisions conscious of Allah Rabbul Izza, ويصبر and persists on it, perseveres, فإن الله verily Allah Rabbul Izza لا يضيع أجر المحسنين will not let the reward of the righteous perish. And a beautiful story that personifies this notion is the story of Qadhi al-Maristan, whose name is Muhammad ibn Abdul Baqir. Muhammad ibn Abdul Baqir was a person who was in Mecca. And in those days, life was difficult. There was no institutions that would pay. And he was living rough and provisions were little. And one day he says, hunger drove him out of his home where he's looking for something to eat. And he doesn't have any money to spend on himself and buy and purchase something to eat. So walking in the streets, he's looked down and he saw a bag, a sack, a purse. He let down, picked it up, took it home, opened it. And he says, I have never seen a pearl necklace like this before. Dazzling and in a nice purse. So he goes, then I heard outside a person calling that all people, whoever has found a sack of pearls, I will give him 500 dinars. And 500 dinars is 500 gold coins. So he says, I thought to myself, I'll go out and I'll give the man the bag and maybe benefit from the 500 because he's offering it as a reward. So because I walked out, I saw the elderly man and I invited him in. I asked him, as is the sunnah of the Prophet, describe the sack. So he described it, you know, with the material that's in there and the tie that's on it. And then I said, describe what's in it. And he described it. And I said, describe the string of the necklace. And he described it. So this Qadi al-Maristan, young student at this stage, gave him the sack back, gave him the purse of pearls back. So the man gave him 500. And this is where you see the taqwa of a righteous person. So he to himself recognizes that, listen, I have no hak on this money because essentially the good was his and I've just returned it. And that's his right. So he said, no, I don't want it. Because the man insisted, listen, I give it out of my free will. And the sheikh said, no, I can't take it. So the elderly man went and the time passed and this Muhammad traveled from Mecca to another land in search of knowledge and teaching. And he says, I boarded a boat to cross the sea and the boat shattered, a storm came, it broke, everyone drowned and all their wealth and stuff drowned with it. I just held on to a plank and kind of was being tossed and turned by the waves and eventually it landed ashore. And when it landed ashore, I dragged myself up and I walked in inland and I found the masjid and I sat in the masjid. And sitting there, again, a righteous individual, he's busy and probably reading Quran and the local people, time for salah comes and they come and they look at him and Alhamdulillah, the sign of piety and deen is on him. So they go, can you lead the salah? So he goes, I moved forward and I led the salah. So they liked my voice and they liked that he could read. So people gathered around me, can you teach us the Quran and be our Imam? So he goes, I obliged because you know my situation is dire. And from this, Allah Rabbul Izzah sent some provision my way. You know, people would pay and there was a stipend assigned to him for the Imam probably. And he continued like this. So because I stayed there some time and then I found in the side of the masjid, some parchment, some writings of Quran. So I looked at it and I started to read it and they saw that I can read. So they go, you can read and write. He goes, yes, I can read and write. So he goes, they brought their kids and enrolled them with me and they increased my pay. And they said, listen, we can't let you leave this place. You have to stay here and you have to teach our kids. And because you're staying here, you know, you're a young man, you need to get married. We have a young orphan girl here who has some wealth left to her. So why don't you marry her? So he says, I refused, but they insisted. So I eventually I relented. And in those days, you wouldn't see your wife until later on, until the wedding night. So at the wedding night, the lady came into the wedding chamber and he looks up and on her neck, his eyes are caught by a necklace. And he's just sitting there, be glued to the necklace. And the poor orphan girl is thinking like, hello, I'm here. And this guy's eyes are just on, on the necklace. So the girl felt, this is a very materialistic person. His eyes are focused on and he doesn't care about me. He's after my wealth. So she complained to the locals and they came to him. Sheikh, what did you do? You broke the heart of an orphan, you know. He goes, no, no, there's a story. So what's the story? He goes, I was in Mecca and I was walking and I found this purse and I opened it and there was pearls in there and an old man came and he wanted, you know, and I gave it to him and he offered me 500 and, and I said, no, and that same pearl is on her neck. So they started to say, Allahu Akbar, Allah, he started screaming until everyone in the island gathered. So he goes, what's going on? They go, there's a story. 
That old man came here, this is where he was. And he used to make dua, Ya Rabb, I have not seen a more decent man than that young man. Return him to me so that I could marry my daughter to him. But he passed away and Allah Rabbul Izzah accepted his dua, brought you here and Subhanallah you married the girl. And not only that, the pearl necklace is still within his family. And this is the verse of Allah Rabbul Izzah, that if you live Allah conscious and persevere, he did the difficult days. But then Allah will recompense. Your reward will not perish. It will come. Just be patient, persevere, bear the difficulty, wait a little bit longer. It's darkest just before Fajr time. May Allah Rabbul Izzah grant you the capacity to bear difficulty in the path of Allah Rabbul Izzah. And may Allah grant you ease and comfort 